Welcome to another part of my Pod Go series. Uh, thanks to Yamaha and uh, Yamaha Europe and Line 6 for sponsoring this video. But if you guys have never been to this channel, uh, they pay for my time. They pay that I make the video. They do not pay for my opinion. I'm going to give you what I think. If what I think is so horrible that I shouldn't make a video, you know, I don't make a video. But if I think is, you know, rightful criticism, I will do that. So we're looking at the big question that some of you might be having, which is, what, but, 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 but how is this? Which is kind of light and, and cute and says pod on it, not helix, different than this, which uh, says helix on it. Now, we're going to start with something interesting. Wait, got to turn this on. Hit the b <laughs> we're going to start with weight. Uh, there will be sounds later in the video. If all you're interested in is how do they sound different, Skip to the how do they sound different section. So this is 6.6 .6 kilogram, whereas this is 2.4. So it's a third of the weight, roughly. Okay. Now, Line 6 is trying to tell you that the Pod Go is a different beast. It's a lesser beast because they're calling it Pod. Whereas the other thing is in the Helix family, which is the creme de la creme of their modeling capabilities. And it's important to distinguish the Helix Stomp from the Pod Go, because one is meant to go on a pedal board and not be an all-in-one solution, whereas this is meant to be an all-in-one solution in that price bracket. But looking at these, this is clearly an all-in-one solution, and this is an all-in-one solution. So how are they different? Well, obviously, they're different in size. I mean... You know, one is much smaller, as you can clearly see. One is much lighter. One is much cheaper. So let's talk price. Uh, last time I checked, I thought the Helix was like twelve ninety nine or something. In Germany right now, the Helix is fifteen sixty nine. In the U.S., probably because of Chinese import pricing, the Helix is sixteen ninety nine dollars. It's one thousand seven hundred dollars. It's not a bargain thing anymore. It's a serious tool. They do have the same models. They have the same blocks. Uh, everything you can get in the Helix, you can get in the Pod Go. Hmm. Kind of. Now let's look at ins and outs. We start with the Pod Go. Pod Go has a guitar in. It's got another ex expression pedal input in addition to the one that you have on it. Um, it's got an effects loop, which can be, t it needs TRS cables, uh, but it can be a stereo effects loop, which is pretty cool, uh, or an aux input if you wanted that. Um, then there's the main out, only a uh, quarter inch, a balanced to unbalanced. Uh, there's an amp out if you want to run it in front of your amp with the four cable method, phones, and that's it. There is no MIDI, uh, there is no stereo in for your guitar there is no you can't really use this just as an effects processor like you could use the uh, hx stomp or the helix um with your amp now let's look at the helix which is of course freaking crazy um so we have another expression pedal input and another expression pedal input and you can go to an amp and there's also a control voltage input uh, the guitar in and an extra aux in there's a mic in which can be fed with phantom power because there's a whole second uh, chain you can run for a mic so if you're running acoustic guitar and you're singing yes it has the ability to have a whole second uh, signal chain which can also be assigned to different outputs now there are uh, four cent in return, so four for loops for external pedals or whatever that you can shove into any part of the signal chain, which is, of course, amazing. You can build this around a pedal board if you wanted to. Very professional XLR out, quarter inch out, just like uh, the Port Go phones. It's got a Variax input, which is, of course, amazing because with your Variax, um, you can save the Variax settings together with your Helix settings. So when you have a certain tuning, you can actually save that. And when you change presets, it changes your Variax with it. Um, MIDI in and out, which is a big thing that the Pod Go doesn't have. Spidiff coaxial uh, RCA in out, 
which is amazing. You can pump stuff from your computer, for example, digitally into this to, to reamp and process it. And even the Ultra Pro AES EBU out. This is, in terms of in and outs, as fully featured as a device comes, and it is as professional as a device comes. Build quality. This is all metal. Uh, the Pod Go has a metal top. It's, it's bent something. Can I help you, X? The dogs. Um, a plastic bottom with a neat little handle, which is really nice, which I really wish this had because this is a heavy motherfucker. Um, but in terms of build quality, this is insane. The brushed aluminum, um, the sides, which, which are really solid, the bottom, which is also metal. This is, of course, a main plug-in. -in. This has uh, the other one. Um, so this is one of the most amazing anti-slip, super solid uh, expression slash volume pedals that anything on the market has. Obviously, more foot switches, and each of the foot switches has a, um, a little screen on it. This is the big kahuna, okay? Um, what's cool about this is you can control it and edit it with your feet. So you can actually go, uh, these are touch sensitive, so when you touch it um, just a little bit, it goes to, let's say, that stomp box, then you go to edit mode, it has all the parameters here, and you can actually edit each parameter uh, while standing up with your foot. I don't know if you would ever do that, but if you quickly need to change the gain, you can, okay? Big difference, this has six continuous rotaries, which can also be pushed, whereas the uh, Pod Go only has five, and this has a uh, continuous dial, which can be pushed, just like on the Pod Go, but this is also a joystick that you can move in different directions. Okay, so, um, this has direct controls for uh, going to the main page, going to your amp menu, whereas on the Pod Go, you have to push two buttons at the same time for that, which isn't really a problem. Um, the Helix, as I already said, has the ability to create uh, parallel chains. So you can have one speaker running uh, in parallel to the other or an overdrive on one side where it's, it's not on the other side and then actually assign them to stereo. Routing-wise, this is more fully featured than the Pod Go. The Helix Stomp is also the same thing. It is more fully featured than the Pod Go, whereas on the Helix Stomp, the chain of blocks that you can have is shorter. This has more processing power. On the other hand, if you are calling up, let's say, a dual cap, which you cannot do on the Pod Go, then um, that eats up quite a bit of processing power, and that makes it impossible for you to pick, let's say, another dual cap. I mean, it, at some point, the processing power is done, and it shows you uh, by graying out certain functions or certain amps. If you call up amp 1 and, let's say, another amp to switch between them with snapshots, which they both have, um, you might end up not being able to select each amp that you want from the second list because processing power limitations. Um, this has a full, again, second uh, parallel path, but it has a full second path at the bottom, which you could go in with a different uh, uh, instrument, uh, with a mic, and do fully parallel processing of two completely individual uh, chains, which is nice. That's why that's the big kahuna. Here, on the Pod Go, you don't have the option of picking an amp and cap combination. It's always amp and then cap. Whereas uh, it's nice that sometimes the cap just follows the amp. That's kind of the same thing. But instead of using up one block, which is amp plus cap, it is always the amp and then the cap. You can do that here too. Here is amp plus cap or separate amp, separate cap, or the cap in dual cap, which is two caps uh, in one block where you can pick and choose whatever you want, uh, two different caps at the same time. Uh, I asked, can be loaded into both of them, how you get to the different blocks. This, uh, the Big Helix and the HX Stomp have the same interface of the lists. This looks a little bit different, looks like pedals, which is kind of neat, but the pedal chain is rather long, so in, uh, you can't do parallel stuff on this. Uh, one of the blocks is a fixed EQ, can't be turned into anything else, can just be turned off. 
So this has less options than the big helix when it comes to doing crazy stuff. Well, what if you don't need the crazy stuff? What if you don't need a mic in or an aux in? What if you don't want to use external pedals, which here you can do, but here you can, you know, have four of them. Um, what if you don't need expression pedals galore? What if you don't need MIDI or digital or XLR? The big question that I would ask myself for recording at home, do I need the 1700 euro helix? Or just to call up a plexi and a delay, you know, basic shit. I mean, the, the stuff that we actually need to use. I mean, the stuff that we record with. A clean sound and a chorus and some reverb. Not dual caps and all that stuff. Then you need the big one. Um, can this do? To, to do the job? Can this play the gig? I mean, at the, at the gig, yeah, I mean, you need quarter-inch to XLR cables. It's balanced, but I mean, this has XLR. For the gig, okay, but I mean, this is 2.4, this is 6.6 .6 kilos. So um, this for the gig in an extra backpack, this you need a special backpack for. So the big question is, how do they differ in sound. Does the big helix really sound better than this? Is this better processing? Is this better A to D conversion? Or no, digital to analog conversion, D to A conversion. Uh, is there anything to be found on that level? Well, I've prepared some clips. I made sure that in the big helix I didn't use amp plus cap, which you can't do here. I used amp and cap separately. So I programmed each of the sounds exactly down to the parameter, exactly down to the right number. They are exact replicas of each other. And to make it really fair, I recorded a loop, which is being pumped into both of them. So it's exactly the same guitar performance, exactly everything uh, programmed like on the other one. Let's see if there's a difference. We're going to start with a clean sound with a little bit of a reverb on it, and then I'm going to turn on a Minotaur overdrive, which is, of course, a clown center. Um, and let's see how that sounds. Both of them back to back. Okay, now uh, let's do like an overdrive-y kind of voxy sound um, with not a lot on it. Let's try that.
let's add some gain, and we're gonna go into a Plexi, with a Les Paul, a little bit of Spring Reverb, and we're good. Both of them back to back. You want heavy? Okay, we're going to strap on the Harley Benton baritone uh, from the Amarok series. We're going to go into an uh, angle with the cap, nothing else. Let's do it. <laughs> At the end, we're going to do a lead sound, nice delay on it. Let's see if we can hear a difference. Oh, <laughs> 
What if you're sitting there complaining, saying, mur, 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 but we can't really hear actually how, how the difference is because it's a long clip and then once you're in the next clip, you don't even know anymore. Well, uh, I intercut them. So when you see the pod go, you hear the pod go. When you see the big helix, you hear the big helix. Here are all five clips again, but literally cutting back and forth. See if you hear the difference. Or hear if you hear the difference, actually. <laughs>
So what have we learned? I have learned that mirroring all the parameters on both of them and doing something that this can do, which just really excludes the M plus cap or the dual cap, um, there's no difference. I cannot hear or feel a difference between the two. The Pod Go sounds just as good as the Big Helix. It has all the same uh, blocks, all the same effects as the Big Helix. On the Pod Go, I cannot pick mono or stereo. On the big one, I can pick mono to, to uh, reserve some processing power. Uh, I think on the Pod Go, it kind of does it automatically, I would assume. So on the big one, you can say, okay, I want this mono, I want this stereo, because if I use it mono, then I have a little bit more processing power left over. But what does it mean? Does it mean you don't need the big helix? Well, yes, you do. If you need digital, you need it. You need XLR for professional stage use. You need it. You need all the stomps. You need it. Uh, you need... Uh, 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 more expression control, um, uh, XLR mic in, you need to run more than one or two pedals with it. This is the big kahuna. You need the crazy parallel processing of two path or even running them. There are a lot more options in terms of how you interact with it physically, the, the ins and outs, and what you can do in terms of the routing. When it comes to the sound, this is as good as this. It might be measurable in a lab, but I can't feel or hear any difference. So if you want a Helix because you want to work at home or you play a little gig or you want it as your fly rig or you want it as your backup rig to throw on the floor uh, because you're not taking your amp or whatever, or you want to use it as your effects uh, uh, unit, well, then you need the big one because it's got stereo ins and outs, which this doesn't. Um, this only has, you know, the input is uh, just a mono guitar input. Um, there are absolute reasons to get the big one. When it's about, let me just record. Hey, actually. Come here. Yeah, you're just as black as the helix. Okay. When you want to record at home, do some home recording, noodle, and get some of the great sounds that are in these boxes, PodGo does it. The fact that they call it Pod is kind of trying to lead you into it's not in the Helix family. It's in the freaking Helix family. Quality-wise, it is. They should have called it the Helix Go. But of course, that would kind of destroy their HX Stomp sales, which in, in US, the HX Stomp is still 200 more than this. Um, this is quite a bit more than this. For good reason, different quality, different ins and outs and all this. But when it comes to brass tacks, which is how does it sound? And they sound exactly the same. So if you were in the market for a Helix, but you didn't bite because it's just too big, too clumsy, too heavy, or too expensive, but you want to actually plug it into your audio interface at home or record with a built-in USB, the PodGo gives you everything that the Helix does. When it comes to sounds. The, the, the main stuff you need. You know, not the crazy effect chains with the stereo and parallel and a little bit of a different cap here, a little bit. Just when it comes to the stuff that matters, Port Go is pretty much dope. I hope this helped you. Please support me wherever you can. Use my links to Sweetwater or Toman. That absolutely helps. It really does. Um, you can support me on Patreon. That really helps. Uh, you can go and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, Facebook, and uh, click the subscribe thing on YouTube. That absolutely helps. Also, uh, animals at the end, uh, they help. I don't know how, but we have them. Animals at the end. Time flying by Thoughts are trapped inside a black hole No sleep tonight Rest till everything is sat in stone So I won't stop trying Till the sun goes up My body's tired But my mind won't stop down